All right, hey, he's Mega here, and welcome to the After Action Review for Supermoto USA Round 1 2022, all right? Uh, I already kind of went over it in the intro video, but it was at Desert Park Raceway in Reno, Nevada, all right? Um, yeah, it's in kind of like northern Nevada, pretty nice track, um, and this is the After Action Review, all right? So, After Action Review is what was supposed to happen, what really happened, and things that could have been done to improve or or stuff that you should you know that went well that you should keep on doing okay so um, what were we supposed to do we we're supposed to compete in Super Bowl USA round one all right and uh, Hayes Mega was planning to race in uh, yeah it kind of got changed up but I was gonna race in adult mini like I normally race all right and then uh, and then uh, I was going to race in um, so a class called air-cooled four-strokes, okay? And uh, so it was a, it was a, um, it was a class just for like mini bikes that are air-cooled, all right? So, so that one, that pesky 150R that just keeps on, you know, dominating everybody, that it, they wouldn't race it, you know, type of thing. So, and, and that, you know, that would give me a better fighting chance, all right? Because I know this bike. Yeah, the KLX 170 won't be able to compete with that, and and the Light B won't be able to compete with that. Believe it or not, these two bikes are about as fast as each other. Okay, <laughs> um, and I can prove that. All right, I sort of, kind of, um, I I don't have the pictures for it, but I I'll, I remember the lap times. Okay. Anyway, um, so I wound up not racing that air cooled force. They didn't have it. All right. So uh, what I wound up racing was. Um, Asphalt Mini, all right. So that was a Supermoto USA class, and then Adult Mini, and then 65 GP. Okay, so the 65 GP class was a uh, was the uh, was like hosted by uh, Northern Nevada Kart Club, all right. That's the that's the organization that for the for the mini motos out there. Okay, for they they run the track and everything. So it's, a, it's like a it's their own mo motorcycle club, kind of like Chasta Motorcycle Club, for the Reading track. So anyway, um, yeah. So I raced in the 65 GP class. Also, uh, what that is is uh, up to 65 CC two stroke, and then up to 160 CC four stroke bikes. Okay. Um, so yeah, you could still race a 150R in that race, huh? Uh, or maybe it was air cooled. I'm not 100%. I'll put the specifications for that race in the subtitle below, right, right here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so that's, so on the first day was all the asphalt racing, right? Um, I race in asphalt mini and 65 GP. Okay. And that was the day I won stuff <laughs> is what I'm going to say. All right. Um, so I, so let's talk about practice I got there Friday night this was September 3rd and 4th by the way September 3rd and 4th 2022 it was round one and I got there Friday night uh, just before the Sun came down and I signed the waiver and and they let me ride on the track all right it was cool um, I've never ridden on this track before and there's a lot of camber turns there's a lot of turns all right it's just there's not a lot of straights you get one straight that's pretty much it <laughs> and uh, and yeah um, you, there's a lot of off camber turns all right and then there's some kind of slick kind of asphalt and stuff so the bike kind of slides a little bit but if you guys don't know anything if you don't know what a off camber turn is is like it's the opposite of a banked turn all right you know, your bike is the the road is going away from the direction you're leaning so so your bike will not want to turn all right and and it, like it feels really sketchy like you it, you don't know if it's going to grip or not you know you don't know how hard you can push it where a bank turn you're you're pushing against the you're pushing against the the pavement all right so so think of a bank turn like this all right here's your wheel right so the bank turn a bank turn would be like that right you're is straight up and down when you're on it so you can push it harder right but if it's off camber it's like this right so you're pushing on it and so it's gonna slide okay it's gonna slide it's not gonna it's not gonna hook up very well <laughs> and that's pretty much all the turns <laughs> okay at Desert Park Raceway they're all like that pretty much okay um, but it was a nice track that's that's one of 
I think that's the only cart track that I've ever ridden on that has elevation changes. All the cart tracks I've ridden on are flat, all right? Um, I know there's a, there's some off-camber turns at Sonoma and, and Redding, but it's not like a, They had like an actual like corkscrew at, <laughs> at Desert Park, okay? It was pretty cool. It, it, it's, it mimics the, the corkscrew like pretty damn well. You're going up the turn. I, I don't remember what turn it was. I think it was like five or six or something. You're going up, and then so, and then you're look. If you look straight out, all you see is like nothing, right? You just see kind of like the sky, the horizon, all right. But then, but then it, it's, it'll suddenly turn left, and you go down, just like the Laguna Seca corkscrew. Okay, <laughs> that was pretty cool. I've never ridden anything like that on a cart track before. That was pretty sweet. All right. Um, yeah, so that's how the practice was. Uh, I think uh, both of the bikes did well. All right. Um, only problem is the light beat has this overheating problem, and and yeah, so that that's one of the things that's going to be plaguing me the whole the whole weekend. All right. So it was supposed to be 100 degrees every day. All right. It, it's it's a heat wave right here in the Bay Area right now too. So it was 100. It was about 100 degrees here in the Bay Area. It's that's miserable temperature here. Okay. Cause it's more humid in the bay area <laughs> okay the good thing is you're in the desert it's a dry heat you know it's more bearable <laughs> i just want to say but still the bike didn't like it all right pretty much um later later in the day the bike would overheat like right away like you turn it on you ride like like 20 feet and it's already overheated you know and and that's that's the problem with this controller. I think I've fried this controller, all right? I've, I've overheated it one too many times and it's just not happy. That or I got water in it or something because I, I, after a wet race, it, it just started doing this, all right? Um, typically what this bike does when it gets hot is it starts pulling the power back, all right? And you can feel it like it, it's like less and less power. But but now it the NXT display just shuts off, all right? It starts boot looping itself. And then, um, and then the bike, uh, it just goes in what I call berserk mode, right? It just gives you a shit ton of power. I can't, I can't even describe how much power. It's just like just everything, all right? Um, like 13, 14 kilowatt, all right? But, and, and the regen is like super duper strong and the throttle is super strong, all right? So it gives you like the full power, which is not what you want when the bike is overheating. So, and then, and it overheats to a point where it just, cuts off all right and so i knew that was going to be a problem after practice <laughs> i just want to say all right um this guy on the other hand you know old old faithful here klx 170 it's a klx 140 with the big bore kit it it loved that track that was it was great on that track it kind of remind me of uh streets of will a little bit but um but this is more technical is what i'm going to say all right but but yeah, this bike is just so comfortable for me to ride. You know, I think it's got it's got a good ergonomics for for ra racing on the kart track, and it did pretty good in the dirt, surprisingly. <laughs> okay, I'll talk about that when we get to the racing, or when we get to the dirt. That, that, that's the Sunday races. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think I had back to back races. Yeah, I had I did have back to back races. So the heat race comes up. All right. Uh, it's it's the next day, and we got our morning practice. I think I took this one out for practice, and I and I, I did the whole practice session with it, and I try I got it up to about six laps, and then it just started cutting out and stuff, and then so I, I brought it back. So I knew, so so here's the here's the scoop, guys. The heat races are six laps, and the main races are eight laps. All right, that's that's a lot, dude. <laughs> and the uh, it takes about a minute to get around the track. All right, so each race is probably roughly like ten minutes or something. So we'll see depending on how fast you are yeah so i knew this one was gonna die oh yeah we got two practice sessions in the morning so i took this one out first because it was cooler and it runs great when it's cooler all right and and it, it was barely able to do six i could already feel on the six lap it's already losing power and stuff it's like probably got half the power you know and then it just goes into berserk mode like like halfway through it so no no bueno guys <laughs> um the battery is okay though. The ba I never overheated the battery the whole weekend. All right, I'll just spoilers right there. The battery behaved itself the whole time. All right. Um, I was so so it's it's definitely the controller's problem. All right, this controller is effed up. All right, I need to replace it. All right. um, and then I took the KLX out 
it did great um, like it usually does uh, no tire warmers so the thing uh, like so the thing is I have tire I brought tire warmers for both bikes okay I knew I was gonna race probably I was probably gonna race both of these bikes okay uh, and my plan was to race this one in the asphalt and this one in the dirt but we had two races that day so I was gonna race this in asphalt mini that's the Super Moto where it raced, all right, and then 65 GP for this one, all right. Um, that's the one with the smaller bikes, sort of. And, and yeah, so okay, so we were supposed to race this one in um, in asphalt mini, an asphalt mini, all right. And so, so the so here here we go, all right. This is the heat the heat race. I think I think we raced this one first. We did asphalt mini first, all right. And I had back to back races, all right. By the way, all right, I think it was race four and five or something. Um, so that means after after one race, I have to go do another race. So it's just it's freaking exhausting. I hate that. But the good thing is you're nice and warmed up, and your bike is nice and warmed up after the previous race. So you don't have to worry about it. The tire is not sticky or anything. All right. I didn't have tire warmers for this bike. I can only run one set of tire warmers at a time because I only have one stand, and and it's like I don't think the generator can handle all that. That's what I want to say. Um, so we kept the tire warmers on this guy. Um, cause I have the slicks on, I have racing slicks on this one now, alright, and, um, and then, yeah, um, and I'll talk about the, what I did to this bike, alright, uh, later, um, but anyway, um, so, so yeah, we, uh, we, we raced, uh, we raced Asphalt Mini, alright, so, and so it was a, it was a heat race, it was six laps, and poof, and we go, and then, uh, there's four of us, alright, um, it's Kevin Vergens, Jeremy Callender, me, and and then some other dude. Sorry, I forgot his name. But he was riding. It was a 150R, 150R, me, and this guy on a, like a KTM 65cc bike. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, and yeah, and then boom, we go. All right. And then um, and I'm right next to the 65cc bike, and I, I think I managed to just barely pull in front of him. Uh, Jeremy and Kevin are like way out in front because they got the 150R power. Uh, well, they managed to pull into the first corner uh, before us, and then so, and then I got the 65 behind me, and and then um, and then yeah, I outpower it. <laughs> okay, I was kind of joking before the race, saying like, hey, you know, my bike has three times the displacement of this this little two-stroke. I bet you it's hella fast. And disappointingly, it wasn't very fast. <laughs> Um, I knew who was behind me, but I, I, I think I was pulling on him. He, I didn't really get, I didn't really look back all that much, but, uh, but yeah, I, I pulled away from him, and I think, uh, I think about, about, on the, like, around four, the lap four or lap five, I saw a shifter on the ground, <laughs> and I was like, and then I looked behind me, I'm like, oh, there's nobody behind me, I bet you it's that, the, the guy that was racing that, that was behind me, it's, that was his shifter, and I'm like, yeah, I never saw him again, so, and that's what happened, he lost his shifter, so, um. And he he told me after the race that uh, he had just like taken that bike bike out of storage or something. It's been sitting around for a long time, and and then he took it out to race and stuff. So I guess uh, I guess it needs more some work. <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah, it wasn't very fast, guys. Um, okay, so yeah, I came in third place. All right, so uh, I I think obviously I think I I'm 100% sure it was Kevin. Jeremy and then me. All right, so so Hayes Vega made the podium be because because I finished third. All right, out of four, it's not too not not too exciting a win is what I'm gonna say. All right, okay. So the next race is the 65 GP race. All right, so uh, Hayes Vega wanted to bully his little bikes, man, with the light beat, but unfortunately that didn't work out. All right, so um, so we lined up. And and we go boom, all right. And then and I so I'm doing the drag launch, man. And, I, and I'm thinking like, yeah, the bike will probably run fine. It's kind of cool right now, right? Um, it, it it's as cool as it's gonna be the rest of the day, anyways. So I do the drag launch. Well, no, I didn't even do the drag launch. I I told myself because this thing, I, I took this drag racing, and I know that if you whack the throttle open like I normally do for drag racing, um, it'll cut out, and then and then you have to turn the bike off and turn it back on. And then, and then it'll run again, all right? So, so guess what? I rolled on it, you know, I guess I must have rolled on a little too fast because it cut out. And then all the bikes just poof, right in front of me. So, um, so I turned the bike on, turn, turn the bike off, turn the bike on, and then I chase, I'm chasing them down, all right? And then I think it's, it, it was four, there were four riders 
man, I, I don't remember his name. There was a guy racing a KX65. Yeah, it was two KX65s and a Kayo, okay? There were two kids. There was a girl on a, on a 65. There was a guy on a 65. And then there was a little kid on the Kayo, right? Yeah, there was two kids, all right, by the way. <laughs> it, was, it was two adults and two kids racing, all right? Well, the, the adult, the, the dude racing the 65, he's, he made it out to the front. I, I think we were pretty close at first, but the, the guy on the KX was really fast, man. I ridden with him throughout the weekend, and yeah, this guy's the real deal. He'll, he'll chase down bigger bikes with that 6.5. He's that good, all right? So don't, don't underestimate KX6.5s, man. They're no joke, man. <laughs> with the right kind of rider, man, they're, they're fast, all right? Anyway, um, so... Uh, so yeah, I'm stuck behind the kids now, all right? I'm already last because I had a bad start, all right? And I, I think, uh, I think it cut out, man, yeah, I think it cut out three times in that race. So I had to, yeah, I'm getting on a throttle, poof, and then, it, you know, that's it. It, uh, it, what happens is I think it's just, it's that instant overphase, instant current overphase thingy, like over, overcurrent or something. It's not supposed to do that, guys, but. It, this controller is messed up so um so yeah i had just turn the bike off turn it back on and keep on going and i'm just like like this the whole time I'm like oh man well we kind of blew this race and and uh, well i tried my best to catch up to those kids all right i was riding the light b pretty much as fast as i could ride it man and i had the tire warmers and i had the better suspension the, the bike was running great man like the, the the bike was handling great all right it wasn't running great but it was handling great <laughs> i'll tell you that Okay, but anyway, I, I couldn't catch up to those kids. Um, they put a kind of big gap on me, you know, because I was having all these bike troubles. But, but still, I couldn't catch up to them, no matter what. I, I was trying my best. Those kids were freaking fast, man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, and they were, they were battling it out. I was watching them. They were, you know, like that. Where, where the, the first place guy was way, way away, you know. <laughs> he was way ahead of everybody else. So I finished last in that race. All right, I was fourth. Um, and I said like, oh, well, it's, it's just too much for the light bead to handle, you know, it's so hot. I can't even program the NXT display because it keeps on, keeps on, um, cutting out because it's, uh, it's so hot, you know. So I, I, I've decided that's it, you know, that controller's got to go. I got to get a new one. I, I, I figure I got my money's worth out of it. You know, it's time to, to get a new something. <laughs> All right. But I, I, I like that controller if it worked properly, you know, I, I got, I love it the way the bike is right now. But anyway, um, so so yeah, I came in fourth, and then uh, and then the main race comes after lunch, and it's hot. You know, Hayes Mega doesn't like it when it's hot, and we got a race. So, and I got back to back races, so I was super exhausted by the end of the races. Is what I'll say. Um, so the plan was to that's it, no more light B for the rest of the day. It's it's just too hot. You know, it already overheats already. This one doesn't mind. The heat so much all right so so i decided to race the klx in both classes both races because there it's pretty much they it qualifies for both races too all right so they didn't really care yeah <laughs> so let's say um they let me do it um so asphalt mini is pretty much uh, oh yeah okay so the asphalt mini race uh we raced the klx the good thing is uh so so we didn't have to put this one on the tire warmers i i brought the tire warmers for this all right, I actually used one of the tire warmers from this and another tire warmer from another set, and I had a, a good set for this one. All right, so, so we put this one on the tire warmers, and and then yeah, so so I knew like oh the tires will be sticky for the get go. All right, it, it, you know it's still pretty slippery in some spots, but yeah, you don't have to wait three laps for it to heat up, and then you know like oh yeah I can push it harder type of thing, right? Because that's generally how it is with the, the tires on this bike, all right? um and and yeah so uh the guy that was racing in that 65 i think uh he was gonna get a 230 i he he had a crf 230 also and i thought he was gonna race that and i was like oh yeah it'll be cool it'll be like a it'll be green versus red it'll be a honda versus kawasaki that'll be a fun race <laughs> and uh he wound up bailing on the last uh yeah he wound up bailing on that race he didn't he didn't race he didn't even show up it was just, so it was just me Jeremy and uh, and Kevin again and and that's that, that's how we finished the race. It was Jeremy. It was 
it was Kevin, Jeremy, and me. It's like, well, what can I do, man? I can't really do much against a 150R with this bike. <laughs> um, unless somebody makes a big, big mistake or that something is wrong with the 150R or they're just a slow rider, there's no way. No, and th these two riders were pretty good, all right? I raced Jeremy a bunch of times. He's pretty fast. And Kevin is just ridiculously fast on that 150R. It's crazy fast. That's <laughs> okay. Um, so that's how it ended, all right? Um, I, well, I wound up getting third place, all right? And that's what this is, all right, guys? <laughs> so I took home the third place trophy for the asphalt mini race because there was only three riders in that race, right? There's supposed to be four, but didn't show, all right? The last guy didn't show. So I wound up getting the third place on the podium, all right? But, I mean, all, all I can say is if you don't race, you have 0% chance of winning, all right, or getting on the podium. So um, the way I see it is like, you know, you're already a winner if you cross the finish line because you, you at least tried and you placed, you know, and you had a chance to win something, right, a trophy. Had a chance to get on the podium. But, yep, yeah, there it is. I got some points for the uh, asphalt mini class. Uh, hopefully there'll be more racers next time. The funny thing is the next day they had another asphalt mini, but it was an exhibition race. Like, why didn't they just race for this one? I don't, I don't know why. Um, well, it costs more for one thing, but... Okay, uh, so, and then after that was a 65 GP race, basically. Uh, so this time, I didn't have to get off my bike and then switch bikes, so that was convenient. I just got off the track and I went back to the, to the grid area and I, and I went back on the track. I was like, oh, this is going to be rough, but that's okay. They will be done with the races after this one. So I was like, all right, let's go. Um, so it was, it was, yeah, it was the two KXs, right? The male, female KX, and then, uh, and then the Kayo, and then me, all right? And it was pretty much the same. It was pretty much the same thing. I think I, I got a pretty good start with the KLX 170. I, we, were, we were really close. Everyone was really close together in the first couple turns, all right? Um, it was the dude on the KX in the front, all right, and then two kids in front of me again. <laughs> okay, the the Kayo and the female KX were in front of me, and then there were yeah there were the their children, all right. <laughs> These children were freaking fast, man. Like put put a really light kids on a teeny tiny little bike, it it'll fly, man. I'm telling you. So so yeah, I was watching them the whole time. They they're really going at it, you know. Um, it was it was a great race to watch from behind. But I could not catch up to them with the KX, the KLX. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't catch up to them with the KLX, unfortunately. So I wound up fourth in that race again. All right. And I didn't get to take home any any kind of trophy or anything. Um, and then yeah. This so this was like the Northern Nevada Kart Club um, sponsored race too. So um, okay. So that was it for the first day. And then we had dirt practice. All right. So. Okay, so the so the dirt section is kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. So they just made that thing like a few weeks ago, okay? And and like yes, yeah, it's a, it's a brand new track, and and there was a lot of um, loose sand on it. All right, um, if it's one thing that that street tires aren't good in is loose sand. All right, <laughs> so let's say, all right, I've ridden I've ridden super photos in the dirt, you know, on trails and stuff, you know, for fun and stuff. And it's great on the hard pack stuff, but anything loose, you're not going to get any traction, all right? That's the problem. So, yeah, you have to really just slide the bike around, all right, to, to, to get to do what you want it to do. And also, you can't, like, yeah, you can't let that front tire sink in, all right? You can't use the front brake, you know, you can't do none of that stuff. You can't let it understeer, all right? You want it to oversteer, actually, <laughs> okay? Okay, anyway, yeah, we went out for practice. Uh, so, yeah, we took the light B out again. And immediately, once I hit the dirt section, poof! Like, I, I was so fast through the track, everyone that was behind me, and then I go into the practice, uh, yeah, I go into the dirt section, and poof, I'm on my ass already. <laughs> like, no, I don't know, well, I didn't fall on my ass, but yeah, the bike went down, I think I, I my knee went down or something, and the bike was down, right? Um, the good thing is, I have these Warp 9 handlebar clamps now, and the direct mount, so, so the, the, um, 
the handlebars don't twist anymore so that's a good thing in a race you know but it also it may damage the handlebars I, i'm pretty sure i think the handlebars didn't get bent or anything that the, the dirt was super duper soft all right so that was the theme of it it was super duper soft all right you have to find the pr places where there it's less choppy all right less sandy okay and there, so like on the inside of the first turn or the second turn was a lot of uh like loose sand right and there it was a little bit of harder stuff and then there was a berm all the way in the back but you have to be going really fast to to hit that berm so yeah i uh i think if you had a bigger bike the berm probably would be okay but on a mini bike it's better to just try to to flat track it on the on the firmer stuff and that's what i that was a technique that i wound up doing okay but yeah i was surprised how horrible this was in the dirt but it did hook up really good I was surprised. That's so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing. Uh, that's the first time I ever ridden with slicks in the in the in the dirt before. All right. And so, the um, I had street tires before on this, and then and there's there's a drag radial on the back of this, um, and uh, and this is like a like a really sticky sport bike tire. All right. Oh, I think uh, this is a Bridgestone S20. All right, S20 Evo or something. Um, it, it's pretty good tire all right it's a street tire uh anyway um yeah i never ridden with like a like a full-blown slick in the dirt before and you know what it wasn't too bad but you have to make sure yeah you have to make sure you slide the bike you know and and the thing is like the um the bike would be getting hot and the regen throttle wouldn't be working but anyway i immediately went down and i think i went and i went back out i, I went and did another lap and then i think i did okay and then there was another time when i just fell yeah, I went down again and I fell and I landed on my back and I was like, oh, and and, the, and I all I remember is when I hit the ground, like hit the ground like flat, like poof, you know, and I'm, I'm wearing like a leather suit and everything, so I, and, and we're, you're going like hella slow, you're not going to get hurt, all right, but, uh, but like all I remember is when I hit the ground, it was like I landed on a cloud or something, like, oh, it was like, it was so soft, I was like, oh, it was, it felt kind of nice actually, I was like, man, I, I kind of just want to just lie down here. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I mean, it's, it was kind of comfortable, but I was like, oh, you better get the hell up because you're gonna get your ass run over if you don't, if you don't get up. Um, and yeah, so I got up, and then and yeah, so the first time I took this out, it was horrible. All right, I, I don't know why. Um, and then I took this one out next, all right, for the next practice session, and it act, actually was a lot better than dirt. So I'm not really gonna talk about the pavement anymore. All right, I, I've I already got that down. Um, now we're gonna talk we're talking about the dirt all right but yeah I knew I knew not to go on the insides where it was all choppy and stuff stay away from the really loose stuff and just the ergonomics of this bike is better I can get my elbow up easier you know you got to get your elbow out and leg out you know type of thing you got to be on top of the handlebars and um, you got to be leaning and you got to be on top of the bike before you go into the corners and stuff um, so so the bike will slide, you know, you know, and I rode it kind of like a flat tracker. What, what I do is uh, uh, If I feel like yeah, if I feel the bike is getting kind of crazy I wiggle the handlebars and then it makes the back slide. All right um, You don't want the front to dig in. All right, <laughs> so, so so that was like kind of my technique I would just kind of wiggle the handlebars because I, I, I learned that on a D, on the DR650. All right this bike I used to I ride this thing in the forest and and like that's what I'll do I'll wiggle the handlebars and then I'll get I'll goose the throttle and it'll slide through the turn. So I knew how to do that. <laughs> so that's that's what I did on this bike, you know. And I, I could do it on this bike too. It's just kinda the ergonomics just aren't that good um, compared to this bike. I feel more comfortable riding this bike, especially in the dirt, that's what I want to say. Uh, which is kinda weird because I'm I I'm I'm so comfortable riding this one in the dirt all the time. So anyway, so yeah, that was the dirt practice, and I have to say, um, I, I was really enjoying it, you know, but I was like super tired. I raced two races that day, and then we're doing the, pra the practice at the end of the day, and my leg cramped up, all right? My leg cramped up pretty bad, and I said, oh, I think that's it, <laughs> okay? So I, I pulled off of the track, and I took a break, and yeah, I had to make sure I was hydrated and everything. You, you ha I had to drink like so much freaking water. I didn't want to drink it anymore, man. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, and yeah, I, th I think that's it's dehydration. That's that's when you get cramps like that. You, it's dehydration and your your lo loss of like nutrients and stuff. Um, anyway, uh, after that, after I took a rest, I kind of went out. 
uh, I took some short laps on this one and this one, and I felt a little more comfortable on this one. All right, I, I knew I had to use that regen brake to get the back to whip around. All right, that's the only way I can get get through that dirt section. Or you know, make sure you're you're already leaning the bike before you you're going into the turns type of thing. You got to lean the bike. Okay. Um, you can't steer with the handlebars. <laughs> Basically, I know it's it sounds like basic stuff, but yeah, it's it's, it's easier said than done <laughs> Plus like when you go in there, it's just like it's a you're kind of terrified sort of you're just like you don't know what's gonna happen You're you're looking around for like the loose stuff and you're trying to you know, what's gonna happen? Where should I go? Where should I put my tires? You know that type of thing, but I had it down pretty good by the end of the day All right, and both of the bikes. All right, so I felt comfortable on both bikes and then so the next day rolls along all right, so um so the next day, a uh, Sunday, I had registered for adult mini. All right, um, that's that's the one that I always race. All right, and um, and that's like uh that's like bikes up to four strokes up to two thirty, and two strokes up to like one two five or something something around there, um, and then um, and then well they don't have anything for the for the electric bikes but this is a mini bike so. <laughs> So we so we rode this. Um, so what happened? Uh, I wasn't sure if this is gonna. I, I'm pretty sure this wouldn't. Like it, later in the day, I don't think it could finish eight laps. So uh, the the plan was to do the same thing we did yesterday. All right, we were gonna ride the uh, we were gonna ride the light B in the heat race. All right, just like just like we did before, and then we're gonna ride the KLX in the main race. All right, and so they they don't they don't mind if I do that. All right, as long as the the bikes fall into that classification, all right? Yeah, I know he's making us like switching bikes all the time, but you could do that, all right? Um, and so the heat race rolls around, and I just tell myself, hey, just don't get on the throttle too much. I was able to actually tune it, all right? I got it. I turned the phase amps down to 380 amps, all right? So, so it doesn't have as much pump punch, but like it'll, it, it, there's less chance of it cutting out, all right? Um, and and it worked all right it didn't cut out in that race once all right and I finished I was able to finish six laps but I didn't do too well uh, what was it how, how many riders there were there oh, there was one two three five. there was a lot of riders there was eight riders guys <laughs> um, yeah there was eight riders in that race uh, I remember there was like kind of two on like pit bikes there was Dean Rabineau all right oh yeah 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 Dean my little buddy Dean, he's right. He's a little kid that rides a like a, a CR85 two-stroke. He's a he's a dirt track racer too. Yeah, he's a fast little kid, man. I love riding with him though. But his his bike is like way faster than mine now. <laughs> it's kind of tough to keep up with him. But anyway, yeah, there was him and was Jeremy, and and then there was these two instructors. <laughs> I heard they were instructors for like fun track days or something. They had these like fancy like race suits on and stuff, leathers. And they had some fancy, I think they were 150Rs, I think, and, and they were really loud and tuned up. So, so yeah, they kind of knew what they were doing type of thing, all right? So I I think it that's the way it finished. Uh, those two guys were up, they, they finished first, second, um, and I think it was Dean, and it was Jeremy, and it was me, and then there was like two other guys, the two other guys on the pit bikes, okay? Um, and yeah, we were just way faster than them, and, and the light we did great in the dirt. Um, did I did I ever crash in the dirt? Mm, I don't know, but uh, I th I think there was a couple times where like I, I probably slowed down a whole lot because uh, I messed up or something. But I never dumped the bike. All right, um, compared to like the first practice yesterday, I did a, I did a much better. <laughs> so was there, right? So so that was it. I think I finished I finished fifth in that race. I finished fifth. I started I gridded second, and I fin and uh and I finished fifth. All right, and then so. Um, we got to race the uh, the KLX in the next race, all right, the um, adult mini race, and then I checked the tire and I'm like, oh no, this is what's what, this is what the tire is. <laughs> the, the tire is freaking flat. Okay, the tire is flat. So uh, I was like, oh shit, uh, I got a flat tire. Does that mean we got to ride the light V again? Because I don't think that's gonna make that race. So. <laughs> So uh, I get the inflator and I fill it up with air, and sure enough, it holds air. It hold it'll hold air for 30 minutes because I had I had it like that for 30 minutes. Maybe it dropped a little bit. So I say, okay, I think it's fine. So I throw the tire warmers on it and we and we go race it. All right. 
and I, I'm just like super tired. It's it's the end of the day, and I just want to get this over with. I know it's only one race, but uh, Hayes Mega is just freaking had it with the heat and everything. I was having a good time, but yeah, the heat was just killing me, man. I was trying to drink as much water and stay out of the sun as much as possible, but it was freaking rough, I'm telling you. Um, so, uh, so yeah, KLX is out there. The tires are nice and hot because they got the tire warmers on it, and poof, we go. All right, and it's the same same story. It's the two two guys, two guys out front in the 150Rs. There's Dean, um, and then and then Jeremy. And I, I was on Jeremy for a while. Yeah, I was on... I, I knew Jeremy, Jeremy's bike is faster than mine, you know. And he's a pretty fast racer, so... Um, but I would catch up to Jeremy in the dirt. <laughs> so, I'm a little better than Jeremy in the dirt, is what I want to say. And, and I'm actually pretty good in the dirt with the KLX, alright? But, yeah, but, but by that time of the day, after all the races and stuff, they had just... Um, so, so during, the, during the morning practice, they had watered... Yeah, so the night before um, Sunday, all right, we everyone went out and we went and groomed the track, all right. We we made the everything compact and they watered it and everything, and it was nice, all right. And then it was like that in the morning, all right, and and it was nice and com uh, nice compact and you, you got some pretty good grip on it. And then by by the time we'd raced the the main race, it was all messed up again. <laughs> I was supposed to say it was just like it was the the day before, you know, it was all choppy and stuff. So so that didn't help, all right. And then there was like a little rut, and then there was a rut, but there was like some kind of some whoops in it, <laughs> okay, or washboards, and like and then like that didn't feel very confident, you know. And uh, but but yeah, I was I was on Jeremy. I was like close to him. I, I think I passed him. No, I passed them on this bike. I passed them in this bike in the last race. That was the funny thing, in the dirt. But yeah, I was catching up to him a couple times. I was really close, and then, but he would pull away when we got to the pavement, and and yeah, and then, and I was just I remember I was so tired. So, and then we're on like like lap six or something. It's a eight. It's an eight lap race, guys. And so on the seventh lap, I try I tried to take a different line on one of the turns. All right, so it's that so it's that turn where I said there's the there's the groove or the berm, the little little groove in the ground, and it has the little the little bumps in it. And I was like, ah, I don't like those bumps. So I decided like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble and I'm gonna go outside of the berm. All right, because I was doing that yesterday and it and it worked okay, you know, but I I I messed up and I dumped the bike. I. I like I legit dumped them, and that's the only time I dumped the KLX during, during this weekend. And then I I picked it up, and and then uh, I couldn't get the bike started. All right, I I knew like oh it's probably flooded, so I I twist the throttle, and I blip the throttle. I blip I blip the starter, and and it's it's not it's it's cranking over, but it's not starting. I was like oh shit, what what do we do now? Um, and then. And on there, they're cranking and cranking, cranking, and then Brock sees Brock is out there. Brock McAllister, he's like working on the track, and so he's trying to help me. I'm I'm trying to get my bike started, and then so the other so the guys on the pit bikes, they passed me already. I was like, oh shit, man, and I just I just totally screwed that up, and and then um, and then yeah, so and then Brock is like, oh yeah, your catch can is probably full of fuel, and I oh shit, and I. That's I like oh yeah that's right, <laughs> and I totally forgot about it. I was so tired, you know, I couldn't like think straight, you know. Um, I had forgotten that when this bike dumps over, the catch can fills up really fast because it's really teeny tiny, all right, and and then it won't start unless you unless you clear the line of fuel. So if I if I pulled the line off, and I, I don't think they would care because we're in the dirt. If you spilled fuel in the dirt, I don't, I don't think they'd give they give a damn. Man. It's it's on the track that you don't want it. Um, but anyway, um, Brock helped push bump start me. He push started me, and we got it. We got it running. Unfor but unfortunately, the the fifth and sixth place guys, uh, yeah, they wound up being fifth and sixth place, and I wound up being seventh place. I was so I went from fifth to seventh, and and I got lapped pretty much. <laughs> um, somebody lapped us. I think who was that? Oh yeah, those the fast guys lapped us, and then I got the checkered flag on the sixth lap. No, no, no. I got the checkered flag on the seventh lap. So, Hayes Mega freaking totally blew that race, alright? Um, that, I mean, hey, I'm not gonna lie, it happens. 
and it happened to a lot of people that weekend because I watched a lot of people racing in the dirt section and like yeah they would dump the bike they can't get their shit started and also they have to kick start it and yeah dude it's a real freaking pain in the ass the, the only the only bike that like I think that you could dump and then like and then just pick it up right away and start riding is this bike <laughs> okay this if you dump this you just pick it up and you, you keep on going you know you just be careful when you pick it up because it might take off if you're not careful um but yeah man it was um what a blunder <laughs> that's what i say um because i i i decided to do you know i i decided to gamble on that lap to see if i can get a little faster so maybe i can catch up to jeremy that was my plan you know and i think jeremy was already kind of pulling away from me um i i was kind of slowing some of the dirt sections sometimes when i went in and then um and yeah i was freaking horrible man i got passed by the two pit bikes and then i i, I wound up getting lapped so i didn't i didn't even finish the eight laps i finished on the seventh lap guys <laughs> damn it i'm so pissed off I, you know what i i think i did get a white flag i i don't remember if i got the white flag or not maybe i only did seven laps i'm not sure but but it doesn't matter. I wound up getting seventh place in that race. All right, I, I was fifth, and then I went. I got bumped down to seventh when when my bike down fell, fell over. All right, and and yeah, I should have been able to beat those guys, man. They were on little pit bikes, and they weren't very fast. All right, <laughs> one guy had like trials tires on it, man. Like, yeah. So, so that's the way it happened. Um, I, I didn't really win anything that day. Um, I got I got seventh. Place. I got dead last. All right, unfortunately. I went from 5th to 7th. Um, but also, I did get this. Alright. I got this, uh, yes. I got this for yesteryear, alright. Um, this is uh, the championship trophy. The adult mini championship trophy. It's a second place trophy. Alright, I got second place in the in Superboto uh, USA 2021 adult mini class. Alright, so this just goes to show that if you show up to a race and people don't show up to a race, then um, then you go you will get points all right and if you get an, if you get an, more points than everybody then you might win something all right um, the number one guy was Chris Smith all right um, yeah I raced Chris Smith a whole bunch of times and his bike is really fast man I, I don't know how I'm gonna beat that guy <laughs> but uh, but yeah he wound up getting first place and I got second place I can't I can't quite remember who third place it might have been Jeremy I think Jeremy was third place all right Jeremy Collender. All right, but there it is. Um, I don't know where I was supposed to pick this up. For some reason, you know, nobody told me. That's <laughs> what I say. But uh, but this is for last season. All right. Um, they they finally gave it to me this year. Okay, and yeah, so I did take home this for the asphalt mini. This was a, I have to say this was a combined effort. All right, between the Light V and the KLX. All right, good job both of you guys. All right. Um, so the tire is flat again on this. Um, I don't know what happened to it, um, but I, I'm going to fill it up with air, and then, uh, and then when I wake up in the morning, I'll check it again, and if it's dead, if, if, it's, uh, if it's got no air in it, then I'll, uh, I'll have to take the, the wheel off and take the tube out and see what, what happened in there. Um, I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe I got a pinch flat or something. I'm not sure, man. I've never gotten a flat tire on the track before it's freaking crazy it's a good thing it didn't go super flat while i was out there so oh or maybe it did maybe that's what caused me to drop the bike yeah I, that so a haze mango is kind of gambling that like yeah will this thing hold air enough long enough to finish that race you know and it was a kind of long race so that might have contributed to why i dumped the bike too i'm not sure okay but yeah i didn't notice it was flat so i think it was okay uh, okay, so things that we could do better. So in, in two weeks, all right, two weeks we're going to be racing in Redding, California at the at the Shasta Kart Track. Um, my 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 favorite place, <laughs> my favorite place, but I hate to drive up there because it's so freaking far, man. Um, but anyway, um, well, so what's the plan? Uh, this this bike is overheating. It has really bad overheating problems. I'm going to change the controller. All right, I got the QS motor. All right, I installed it and it didn't work on the bike. All right, it's the QS motor is supposed to be a better motor. It's supposed to give you more torque, more power. It's supposed to be able to handle more punishment. It can handle more field weakening. It can it spins at higher RPM, so that's that's a lot of you know that's a diff, that's a definite upgrade. All right, but it 
doesn't work with this controller. I tried it already. You know, it's only about as fast as a stock sword on with it, with that motor and this controller. So I've decided I'm going to buy a EMX Ron controller from Electro and Company. All right, um, they sell a controller that will work with the QS motor. So and I actually wrote it. I rode the bike with the controller, but it didn't have the QS motor in the bike. Okay, so so it must be freaking awesome if uh, if you know if you pair the two together. All right, and that's what I need. He he guaranteed me. Um, Austin guaranteed me that, um, that from Electro and Company. He guaranteed that like yeah, even in the temperatures like that are really hot, like like in hundred degree temperatures, it'll still run. All right, and and that's what I need. All right. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, the one thing I'm going to lose is the regen throttle, right? There is no like tuning options with that setup at all, but I'm going to give it a whirl. It, it's got, uh, I want to try this QS motor out, all right? There is also the KO motor, but it's just, it's too expensive. I don't want to waste my money on that, all right? And then this one, uh, I got to fix that front tire, all right? Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to take this to Reading. Um, it's always good to take two bikes, as you can see. So if something happens to one bike, you can, you know, you got another bike to race, all right? And I can race these in the same class because they're they're the same class type, type of bikes, all right? They even get the same lap times, guys. So yeah, I did mention about the lap times. Okay, I did look at the lap. I did get a chance to look at the lap times on the asphalt, all right? And these these bikes are one seconds apart from each other. Can you believe that? <laughs> one second. One of these bikes has got a 102, and one of these bikes got a 103. Because we were we were, we had to rent transponders and they can get your lap times and stuff, so that was pretty cool. Um, and so that just goes to show these bikes are about as fast as each other, right? KLX 170, all right? It's a KLX 140 with the bore up kit, and it's a freaking hopped up Suron, all right? And they're about as fast as each other. This one's just way way lighter and it beats me up way less riding this. Uh, one thing I did notice about riding on the track was um, I didn't know what gears to be in. For, for that track because I'd never ridden it before. This one was so much easier, I didn't have to worry about gears, you know. I just had to just twist the throttle. So I actually liked riding this better over there. But but after I figured out all the shift points and stuff, yeah, it's not too bad, all right. Um, I actually felt more comfortable on this at the end than this, but I, I still like them both, you know. But this one beats me up more is the problem, so you can bet. Okay, yeah, so, so that's the scoop. That's my after action review. All right, uh, so hopefully I can get these two bikes up to snuff. Like I said, it's good to have two bikes, but if each bike has a problem, in which that's what happened on the last day, I got a flat tire on this one, and then this one's like overheating. It's like I almost almost have to go back out on this thing, all right? Um, would it do okay? Maybe, uh, since I turned the power down, it worked a lot better once I turned the power down. All right, but it, it's, still, I, I'm, it's still iffy whether it works good. And, and then, yeah, what's the point? If, if you turn the power down, you're not going to be able to catch up to the guys in front of you, man. <laughs> the goal is to get number one, guys, number one. Right? And it's, that's going to be, that's a tough, that's a tough uh, cookie to, to crack right there, man, I'm telling you. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, so I have to say that the, the suspe I, I did a lot of suspension work on the Light B compared to the last time we raced last year. All right, we got the Dorado fork, and I got a new set of wheels uh, running Moto Three. Uh, I, I my track, I have a track, I have a track setup now. All right, with Moto Three tires, Moto Three racing slicks. All right, and it was great. The bike handled so good. All right, the only problem with this, it didn't have it. It the the bike handled good, but it didn't run good. All right, so um, so we're gonna fix that. All right, I want to get a new controller and new motor. And then hopefully uh, we'll be able to see the full potential of this new setup, all right? But it worked great, all right? This is the second time I've taken it out. I took it out to Sonoma once, and I took it out to De Desert Park Raceway, right? And then, uh, and yeah, it did great. Uh, I was surprised how well it handled, and and like yeah, I wanted to push it harder, but I couldn't, all right? Um, I when when I twist that throttle, I want I want it to have power, you know? I want it to go, you know? Um, and I wasn't getting that all right. Um, and another thing is I need a rear brake. I don't have a rear brake on this. I don't have a mechanical rear brake. I have a regen brake. So if I get that new controller, it's not going to have a regen brake anymore. So I, I, I need to get a mechanical brake. I think it has a off throttle regen, and I would rather have a regen throttle, okay, than a than an off throttle. But um, if that's what I got to do to to get that QS motor to work, then 
that's what I got to do. Um, I, that's that's just the weakness of this bike. It just it gets hot, you know. Um, and and like I could try to get a I could I could try to go with the BAC eight thousand kit, but those are like a thousand dollars. They're really expensive. All right. Um, the BAC four thousand and the EMX run kits are roughly the same price. So. And, and I already know the limitations of the 4000. The 4000 is not good for racing, guys. 4000 is good if you're just, you know, you want a little something faster than, than the BSC 2000. <laughs> okay. I, in my opinion, the BSC 4000 is perfect for your average rider, right? But if you're going to race, you know, if you're going to push the bike really hard, like at super, in Supermoto, um, BSC 8000, that's the one you should get because um, it can handle more punishment. And I would say just like, you know, Turn the settings down a little bit to make it reliable. Make it, make it have the same power as the BSC 4000. They just have better endurance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. There's really not much else to do with this bike. This bike is running great. I just need to fix that front tire. Right? Um, and the tires are getting kind of old on this. I think I I need to at least replace the rear tire, but I don't think we have enough time for that. But it's it's it worked. It, it ran fine. Um, so. I might, uh, we'll see what's up. <laughs> so pretty much, yeah, the same thing as we did that this time. We'll do it the next time in two weeks because we don't have a whole lot of time. I don't know if I'm going to get that controller in time, so maybe it'll, uh, but I hope, hopefully we'll get it in time for the third race. All right. Um, yeah. If not, well, we still got the KLX to race, so whatever. I mean, it's only, it's only a three race, uh, season this year that's <laughs> what I would say so if if uh, if we can we'll we'll try what we we'll just do what we've been doing you know we'll fix the bikes all right one thing I did do is I, I replaced all the chains all right before uh, before this race I don't think I really needed to replace the Kawasaki one but but yeah it, no that I did because it was really old <laughs> the chain was really old there was a stock chain all right and I've had this bike for this bike is more than ten years old already. It still has the stock chain on it, and I've never had a problem with the chain on the bike. But I just changed it just because, okay. Um, and I didn't have any problems with the chains or anything. All right, but I, I will go through both of the bikes for the next race. All right. Yep. Uh, but yeah, all the suspension and stuff worked great on this. This thing was a joy to ride. All right, it just didn't run properly because of the heat. Uh, if it was cooler. Then I think it would it would have been better, but yeah, I, I think I think that controller is just it's had it, man. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the AAR. Thanks for watching. Here's Miguel. Check out the race videos. All right, another thing I wanted to point out uh, is my my health. Okay, <laughs> that's what I would say. Um, yeah, it was so hot and I, I was not feeling good. I feel like horrible right now. I just got home from the racetrack. Okay, is what I want to say. It's like three in the morning, but yeah, I'm super tired and super dehydrated. Every night when I went to go pee, it was like super yellow. All right, I tried to get that clear by the next day. All right, um, yeah, I, I was hurting really bad. Like I had really bad heat cramps. Like I said, my leg cramped up during one practice, and then today my my wrist cramped up. Um, he's making it's just getting old, man. This stuff didn't happen to me before. <laughs> That's what I say. So. But yeah, it's kind of annoying, man. I'm telling you, but but yeah, I think uh, I think I need to uh, I need to work on my fitness. All right, I know I always say that I need to I need to work out more. You know, uh, I think for a while I was doing squats, and and it, it helps a lot because you got to stand up and move around on the bike a whole lot, and squats strengthen your legs. So I think I should start doing that again. But he's maybe it's just been so busy lately, you know. So some people were out there racing a bunch of races, and you know. They, they could still do it. <laughs> I can't do it, man. Yeah, I was like kind of dead. I only raced one race today, too. So that's, that's, that's the crazy thing. I did three races during the whole weekend. One time, I think one time I did three races in one day. It, that's just like too much, you know. Uh, one race is actually two races, right? It's the heat race and the main race. So, yeah, it's, it's too much for me. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't have that kind of endurance, man. Um, I don't, I don't know how, the, the only way to get better at riding is just to, or racing, is just to keep on racing, you know, but I don't do it enough, that's what I want to say. And I, so, I do so many different types of racing, that's another problem. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so anyway, yeah, I'm not feeling too good right now. Um, I need to go drink some water and eat something. Um, and yeah, I was getting really bad, like, heat cramps and stuff, so. 
got, we got to work on that because I think it might be hot when we go to Reading too, and it, it's going to be more miserable at Reading. When it gets hot at Reading, it's it's miserable. <laughs> it's big hot. Oh, it's the next day. Anyway, I also wanted to add this clip to to thank the Northern Nevada Cart Club uh, for um, for hosting this race. All right, <laughs> it was freaking. It was awesome. They were awesome. They were. They had great hospitality. That's the first time I've been to that track, and and I'm pretty impressed. I I like it a lot. I I love to come back. <laughs> I just want to say, um, uh, and thanks to Jeremy Callender, he uh, he got us sandwiches on the second day. They tried to get us food trucks. Um, it's always nice to have food at the track, so you know you don't have to worry about cooking food or anything because I'm by myself, you know. And uh, uh, it's also a pretty nice in, in, in a pretty nice location. The the town, like civilization, is not too far. It's probably like a few miles, and then there's a couple stores and gas stations and stuff. So, but uh, but I stayed there the whole time. I camped there the whole time, and um, and yeah, it was great meeting meeting the people there. The 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 Reno uh, racers and stuff. They really impressed me. It's nice to see see and race new faces. Is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Um, and it it never fails like there's always some fast kids there man and and they really impress me a whole lot man I could not keep up with those kids <laughs> um, what else and then um, and then yeah the track the track facilities are pretty awesome it was nice being able to pit on some asphalt for once <laughs> you know and um, yeah and, and then thanks for Superboto USA also they for like putting this event off it's it's a lot of work making these events you know and if people don't come then they can't you know they can't keep on putting these races on we get we got to have we got to have people come in and race you know it's you can't race by yourself <laughs> that's what i say right you got to have other people to race with right and that's what makes it fun you know you got to have people to play with they also had um like a they also had like a riders lounge sort of they had a tent set up there with a bunch of drinks because it was really hot and they had brought in a swamp cooler and and yeah it was they were just awesome you know they tried to do the best they had with what they got you know type of thing and then and at the end of the day they fed us so that's <laughs> pretty nice too